Hey guys, I'm Lyle Sturgis. I'm the Roush Performance Manager at Tyndall Roush Performance and today I am here in this beautiful facility called the Mustang Owners Museum. You need to take a look at this and check it out because this is a phenomenal place to be. And I wanted to come down here today because many of you know me, you know, as the Crazy Mustang Man. But uh, today I wanted to give you a little background on the Crazy Mustang Man. And Jaron had asked me to come in and just kind of talk to you. So I'm going to give you a little background on Lyle Sturgis, who evolved into the Crazy Mustang Man. Back in 1967, when I turned 16 years of age, like every young person wanted a car. But I grew up in a small town here, Lowell, North Carolina, right there at a textile mill that my dad had run, and my mom taught elementary school, so we bought us a Mustang, or excuse me, they bought them a Mustang. And because my mom and I were tight, she says, you know, we'll share this Mustang. So this was a lime gold. That was a brand new color back in those days, lime gold, with a black vinyl top, and my dad had bought it from the Ford dealer there in Gastonia, Mr. Buddy Lewis, and it had been his wife's demo. So they said, hey, Harry, you need to buy this car. It'd be a great car for your wife. And your son could drive it too. It was a GTA. Now for you Mustang guys, you know a GTA was a really cool special vehicle. So this Mustang GTA became mine and my mama's because at that time in North Carolina, students could drive school buses, imagine that. And that's what I did to earn my money to be part of my payment along with working at the mill. So this became our car. And being the young man at 16 I was, you know, Mustang wheels and hubcaps are cool, but you gotta have big, wide, fat tires and you gotta have some Keystones or some Kragers on it. So I saved my money. And my buddy, Lay Babernathy, and I decided when my parents went to the beach that we would put the air shocks on, we'd get the big tires on the back, L60s, G60s on the front. Man, this was a bad mamma jamma. So when my parents came back from the beach, I gotta tell you, they weren't really near as happy as I was. So I wound up getting grounded and driving my dad's Rambler wagon for a while. And eventually my mama came back and said, darling, you ruined my car. So it's yours now, and uh, guess what? Your dad is going to buy me another car. So bingo, hey, I got me a car. And there has never been a month in my life since 1967 in February that I haven't owned a Mustang. You know, I've owned other cars because, you know, we had a family and we had children, but I had a Mustang. So I've been there through the progression, and nothing tickles me more than to hear people say, their first car was a Mach 1, 1969. I had a Mach 1 in 69. I thought I was kind of special, but guess what? I found out they must have made 7 billion of them because every show I do and every event I do, the first car everybody owned was a 69 Mach 1. Well, I found out, I got a chance to talk to Edsel Ford one day with Jack Roush, and I said, Mr. Ford, how many did they build? Because everybody's first car was a Mach 1. He laughed. He said, well, it makes a good story, doesn't it, Lyle? And I said, yeah, I guess it does. So I went on through the 70s and the 80s. And you know, Mustang has not always been the car that was the big, bad, fast one because we went through the four-cylinder and the six-cylinder days, the Mustang II. We, right here in the museum, there's got to be the most gorgeous Mustang II that's ever been built. And uh, it was donated here to be on display. So I got to tell you, those were the years that weren't quite as, uh, what would you say, fast and furious as the ones today. I remember if we got 300 horsepower, we were the baddest thing on the boulevard. And now you tell somebody you've got 670 or 700, and they'll tell you, my friend's got one 2,000, so who, who knows how much horsepower. Horsepower is nothing but a dollar. So I went on through those days, and uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I was working at a Ford dealership in Shelby, North Carolina, and Roush was trying to branch out some of their uh, dealers. And I got the fortunate experience to meet a guy named Steve Ford. You know, Steve Ford was a rep that was knocking on people's doors, and there was Terry Cargus with Roush, and of course, Jack Sr., and was given a chance to take on the Roush brand. I don't believe there were 
eight Roush vehicles registered from Michigan to Florida at that time. And so we started, my wife and I would take a tent that Roush provided. I don't know if Roush provided it or Steve just got it somehow, but we got a nice tent. And we would take two cars and she and I worked every event in the country that we could work. A tent, a table, two chairs, a bunch of flyers. And if you're seeing this, you probably got one of my flyers at one time or another. And that's how we started the Roush program. Two cars, a tent, a table, a couple of chairs, and two people that loved Mustangs. Well, I'll say I love them, and Gene kind of put up with me loving them and helped me, but uh, we handed out flyers, so many that we'd even be at Mustang Week, and somebody would say, I don't put that on my car, you know, uh, I've got this or I've got that. Say, Excuse me, sorry, you know, but I'd give it to them anyway. And, you know, you throw enough mud out there, sooner or later some of it sticks. So as it went on and sales went on, I guess I was told time after time by so-called great Mustang people that, boy, hooking your buggy on Roush is going to be a tough climb. Well, I sold some GT3 500s at that time, and, and we, I was just a performance guy. But Roush had a place in my heart. And everything was going real good, and we were selling some cars, and on December 23rd, 2008, I get this phone call. And I find out after several years of just hurting that I was diagnosed with cancer. Well, you know, when you hear that back those years ago, that's 10 years ago now, a lot of people freak out and go nuts. I just took a deep breath and listened to what they said. And they said I had cancer on my pancreas. Well, I didn't know enough, man. I'm a high school graduate. I've learned everything I needed in 12 years, so I didn't go to doctor school. But uh, people told me that that's pretty tough stuff. And then I found out it had spread over to my spleen, lymph nodes, thorax, and you don't have much time, Lyle. You need to think about this. But you know, being the good Lutheran boy that I am, I decided better to talk to God than it would be to talk to anybody else. And I had just gotten involved big time working with these Roush cars, working with these Mustangs that I loved all my life. And then this happens. So after a prayer, after a lot of thought, to make a long story short, we got through this. It was a long battle, but it was a battle well worth it because I tell people when I talk to them about these Mustangs, if you don't believe in prayer, hot rod Mustangs and a whole lot of chemo, I got to tell you, I'll probably piss you off because I know it works. So the Mustangs were my therapy car. And I can't tell you how many times I've sold people cars who have gone through heart trouble, cancer, uh, lost of a loved one. And you know what that therapy car was? A Mustang. You know, Mustangs are Mustangs. I'm fortunate and blessed to be affiliated with Roush Performance Products and Jack Roush and Jack Roush Jr. I gotta tell you, I had a wonderful dad, but if I had to pick another person that was like a dad figure to me, it would be Jack Roush. He has been so kind to me and, and helped me to get to this point where I am. And uh, a Mustang is a Mustang. And I tell people, I would think a Roush is great. I think a Shelby's great. Every Mustang from that 67 GTA Mustang I had to now, it's all about the Mustang. It's not about someone's name that's across the window here. It's a Mustang. And I think that the community needs to always understand that. I think Roush is the heat from Mars. And there'll be another man that will say, the Shelby brand is the heat from Mars. And there'll be another man that will say, my GT is everything that yours is. And then comes a little girl with her six cylinder or a little boy. This is my first Mustang. Guys, your first Mustang is something that will stay with you forever. Mustang has brought families together. They, everybody has a story in their life that Mustang made a difference. In mine, it's not a hobby. It's a career, it's a lifestyle, and I share that with my customers. You know, Jaron and I have worked so many shows together all over the country, and we see this each and every day. When you see some of his posts, it's not just a Roush, it's not just a Shelby, it's, it's a Mustang. And that's why this museum, this beautiful place that, that's going up right now, this is a tribute to Mustang owners. That's why they call it the Mustang Owners Museum. It's not called just one brand. It's the Mustang owners. 
My story has been a phenomenal ride. The, my faith in God to be able to sell these cars, I really make friends. I've sold thousands of these all over the country and even in other countries. And these are real friends. You can go to a car dealership and buy a car and chances are four years later when you go back, that guy won't be there. He's down the road selling something else. Well, I got into this thing and I'm here and uh, it's part of my life. My wife has come to understand. Somebody asked her, is Lyle having a midlife crisis? Well, I got to tell you, she told him, no, no, he's got an all life crisis because that's what it's all been about, man, this hot rod Mustang. You know, the crazy Mustang man says, hot chicks and crazy Mustangs. That's cool. Well, I found my hot chick years ago. But listen, I still like the hot chicks and I like the crazy Mustangs. So uh, Mustangs are what it's all about. I, I just know this is a great opportunity to be able to share a love and a passion that I have with others. So every time I sell one of these hot rods, many people think, you know, well, that's got to be great. How many do you sell? It doesn't matter how many. It's how many life-changing experiences can you do with an automobile? The automobile is one thing that has moved America for years. This one behind me to my right is a cancer car. And to give you a little background on it, when we did this cancer car, it all started from a couple from up in the Asheville area, Les and Michelle Dusher. And you know, they had a passion for this Mustang, who we call Guinevere, and a passion for cancer survivors and cancer patients. And so they went all over the country with that car to every cancer center that they could get to. And all these autographs on here are survivors, people that have been touched by cancer, people that have moved to the other side. So it's really a cool deal. And uh, when they traded in for another Roush Mustang, my question was to my owner, to Natalie Tindall, what are we going to do? This car has five billion signatures. And just as smooth as she could say it, that's our tribute to people like myself and other people who have faced cancer and any illness. So her name is Guinevere, and that's the cool thing about Guinevere and the cancer car. And then we have all our Roushes. This is a new jackhammer sitting behind me. They're going to build 200 of them this year. They're a very special edition car. And then farther to my left is our flagship car. It's a stage three Roush Mustang. I own one of those. I own a stage two. I've got a 427R. I've even got a nightmare. I'm just roused out, I gotta tell you. But I love these things and I know that you will too. You need to come by these museum and visit this thing. It's like I said, it's got Roushes. It's got Holman and Moody. They built a beautiful vehicle here. Uh, we have the Celines, we have the, Stay, the Mustang II, we even have one of the original cars, the old 64, 66 model Mustangs. We've got some nice cars here. Uh, Steve Hall and Jaron and all, they've done a great job here. So this is a great facility. Then you get to go out back and see this humongous building that's going up. I gotta tell you, and it's gonna be for people like me and people like you who are Mustang owners. So. I just appreciate the opportunity to come and tell the story about how Tyndall Roush Performance became the number one Roush dealer in the world. We went from a little town in Shelby, North Carolina. We started with these two cars, a whole lot of heart and belief that we could make a difference and we could be the biggest and the best. But that second word is what I wanted to be. We want to be the best. And then as the Keeter family moved on, Natalie Tyndall took us in. And that's when, man, that's when our program took rocket ship power. Natalie Tyndall and Tom Chester's belief in me and my program has taken us to whole new levels. I knew that I could do this. Jack Roush knew I could do it. Jack Roush Jr., all the guys. Taylor Blower, I gotta mention Taylor Blower because Taylor Blower has been with me through this whole journey. If it hadn't been for Taylor Blower, man, he and I have really walked up and down the road together selling these hot rods. And uh, man, he's like a son to me, but most of all, he's a partner in performance. And now Roush Performance Products just continues to grow. We have the Roush Road Crew. 
people like Dana Valcourt, who are very involved in this road crew event, Mike Ray. Uh, there's a lot of people involved in this program. And now with the new leadership that Roush Performance Products has with Ray, um, man, I got to tell you, the sky's the limit. But at Tyndall Roush Performance, regardless of what anybody says, we are here for biggest reasons to have doggone fun. And so we're going to have fun. We're going to sell love affairs or a lifestyle every time you get a chance to see the crazy Mustang man, Lyle Sturgis. So I don't know exactly how this would end, but I guess if the crazy Mustang man was going to say it, he'd probably say it like this. Man, it's been a blast. It's a lot of fun. We got a long way to go and we got a long time to get there. So we're going to go smooth and easy with these hot rod Mustangs. So you need to give me a call 704-466-6160. See the crazy Mustang man, Lyle Sturgis. I want to get you into one of these cool lifestyles. See ya. <laughs>